welcome back. We are here for another Saturday morning with the Quilting Corner and we are going to start like we always do with the subscribers. We have several of them today. The first one is Barbara Catalano and she's out of Tennessee. She has made a NASA print quilt and it's in the attic windows um, pattern and she's bordered it with Celtic knots. So check this out, it is so neat. And she's put a lot of different things into the one quilt and made it pretty and well, you'll enjoy it. So let's see it. The next quilt submission is from Cheryl Foster, and she has been busy. She's still learning, but she said she is enjoying it and learning as she goes. The picture she has submitted, she's submitted two pictures. So take a look at this one. The third submission is from Sherilyn Danielson, and she is out of Big Sky, Montana. She said that she had watched our Square in a Square video that we did, I don't know, six or eight months ago, and she was inspired by it, so she made one. She made it out of Southwest prints that she got in a quilt shop in Arizona. She said she gave the quilt to her daughter, who was thrilled with it and she's already on her second one. Her second one is gonna be made out of cowboy fabrics. So she is working on that now, and well, she's doing a good job, so let's see this one. The next subscriber is Susie, and she is out of California. She said she found this quilt at a rummage sale at her church. I can't imagine. It is a beautiful quilt that she found at this church rummage sale and it wasn't bound. So she sent it to her mom's friend in Michigan who bound it for her and gave it back to her. So now she's got this quilt to cherish forever. She said she wished she knew the history of the quilt. You guys know I, I say it all the time. Label, label, label. This quilt did not have a label on it, but I wish it had. It's not even my quilt, and I wish it had a label on it because I would love to know also this um, history of this quilt. It's got things like the one square that she's submitted in it said 6-1932. Six six so I assume maybe June of 1932. I don't know. All we can do is assume from here on out because there was no label. But that is why I always say importance of labels because we would know so much more about this quilt and who made it, where it came from, if there was a label. But it is a beautiful quilt, so I want you to see it now. So let's look at it. The fifth and final submission for this week is Nancy Vance, and she is out of Alberta, Canada. And she said in the email that she sent that 10 years ago, she had a stroke and she had to learn to write, talk, and walk all over again. She lost some memory and her therapist was working with her and cut some squares for her and taught her how to sew them together 
and well, she's not stopped since then. We all know how addictive quilting can be, and she is learning as well. She said, that was 10 years ago. Five years ago, she slipped on ice and broke her back. She has had a tough time, but she broke her back. She said she now makes the tops with her guild, and the guild finishes the quilt, and she's loving quilting, and she has submitted a quilt. Just, well, just look at this one. You see what I mean? It was beautiful. All of these quilts submitted today are gorgeous and heirlooms forever and ever and ever and will be cherished by whoever gets them or whoever keeps them or whatever. But quilts have a history with them and people love them. I know I love them. I know a lot of you guys love them. So keep them coming. Keep submitting them. You guys are doing amazing, amazing, beautiful, inspiring work. So keep those submissions coming. And if you have one that you would like to submit, email it to us at socharmingquiltshop at gmail.com. It's S-E-W, charmingquiltshop at gmail.com. Or text us at our shop and however you need to get it to us, get it to us and we will try to get it on the next episode so that other people can be inspired and enjoy watching these as well. We all like seeing what other people are doing. So send them on, we love it. But now let's get on to today's project. Okay, so I just said we're gonna get on to today's project, but a little mishap in the words. It's really not a project. It's a, how do you say it? A learning lesson. So let's get into starch, all things starch. I recently got asked what's the difference between best press and spray starch. So let's go over those and what the difference is. Okay, we're gonna start with starch. Starch is made from rice, corn, or wheat, and it gives a wrinkle-free, crisp finish to a fabric. So, for example, men's shirts, when they are starched, they're crisp, they're stiff, that's what starch is. Best press is similar, but different in the same thing. They, the, the starch helps reduce fabric and fraying and distortion, so it's used quite often in quilting, and it adds a stiffness to make it easier to work with the, the pieces for your squares and your half square triangles, your flying geese, that kind of thing. Whereas best press is not quite as stiff. It is a starch and it does stiffen your fabrics and it works well. This is probably the most common one that I use in most everything I do. Um, it has an ingredient in it that allows it to penetrate the fibers of the fabrics faster. It doesn't gunk up an iron. It's not as stiff, but I will say when you're using this, let it, if you're gonna use this one, this type, spray it on your fabric, let it sit for a few seconds, and then iron, because it lets it get into the fabrics a little more and it won't gunk up the underside of your iron as bad. So that's my little tip on that. There's also another one, and I forgot to bring it home so that I can show you what it looks like, but it's in a bottle similar to this, and it's called Flatter. It relaxes the wrinkles and, and such, just like this does, but it's starch-free. So whereas Best Press and this, this is gonna be, this is gonna give you your stiffest fabric. If you were going to use this one or this one, this one leaves it um, stiffer. Then this one leaves it stiff, but not as stiff. Flatter would be the third option, and it flattens the fabrics, but it does not leave it stiff. So it's going to leave it just like 
the fabric started. So if there was a one level, two level, three level, this would be the stiffest, this would be the medium, and then the flatter would be the, the non-stiff version. Um, but it, it doesn't help with fraying or stiffening fabrics like the other two do. So, well, that's kind of my cut on that one. Uh, when you're cutting across grain or cutting curved shapes, that's when you're going to want to use uh, starch. You, you use it for a lot of different things, but definitely when you're cutting against the grain or cutting curves, it makes it a whole lot easier. So there's my take on that, and I want to show you a little bit. I wish you could feel this fabric so you'll understand more of what I'm saying. But if I sprayed this side of the fabric with Best Press, then I let it sit for a second. I'm going to, go to iron it. Spray a little more than I meant to. But then I'm going to iron it. It is a little bit. I guess a little little bit stiffer, but not a whole lot. Whereas this side, see how pliable it is right now? I'm going to spray it with the regular spray starch like you use when you're ironing shirts or dresses or, or whatever. And then you're gonna iron it. And this side's gonna be stiffer than that other side. I really wish you could feel it though, because you can feel a difference more than you can see a difference. But this side, see how stiff that is, how, I hope you can see it in this, whereas this side is not as much. It is, it is harder than this middle that hasn't had anything, but this is a lot stiffer. You, you can, I think you can see this in the camera, but Anyway, that is the difference between these two. I hope that made sense. I hope you understand now a little bit more about the starch and the difference of it. You really, it's not as easy to see here, but I can feel it and I can tell it when I'm, I'm touching the fabrics. So the middle level, the highest level, and then the flatter is the third. The flatter is if you just want to get wrinkles out, but you do not want it stiff at all. This one's if you want it crisp stiff. This one is the one I use 99% of the time because this gives you the crisp, the <laughs> can't even get my word out. It gives you the crispness, but it doesn't make it 100% stiff and well, it does the job the best, in my opinion, for most projects that I do. Now, different projects are different ways, so it depends on the project you're working on as to which one I would use. But flatter, if you don't want any stiffness to it too, that is a great product as well. That's a little bit about what starch is, what it does, and well, the difference in it. I hope this helped in some way. I hope you've learned something from it and have a little bit better of an understanding of what starch is when it's used, that kind of thing. If you're trying to get um, small cuts, like tiny little triangles and such, it is best to starch it because it will not move, it, it, it doesn't fray. The, the time I use the starch the most is on small projects on curves and on something that's kind of an odd shape or things like uh, small half square triangles, uh, flying geese. I'll use them a lot in those. So that is basically my take on starch and what, what it is, when to use it and well, that's about it. So if you have a question, if I didn't answer something that you want me to answer, let me know, leave it in the comments below, and I will try my best to answer it. And if I don't have the answer, I'll try to find the answer. But that is basically it. So comment below if you have a question, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, we will see you again later and happy quilting.